So summer is finally here, which means it's time to get my Omega Planet Ocean back in rotation. Now, this is by far my favorite summer watch. But before we talk about how I feel about my only dive watch and this rather cool new strap, I want to talk about where I see the uh, current model range. Touch on the recent boutique edition models, some of which are pretty cool, and speculate about the future. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and while you're there, why not subscribe? Now this isn't a full review of the Planet Ocean, I've sort of covered that previously in full, including the sort of lineage and the design and all the different references. Now I'll leave a link in the top corner, whichever one it is, so go check that out. Um, and I know what you're going to say. This is yet another Omega video or Omega video from the English watch. True. And, you know, despite my recent Omega bashing, I still do hold a sort of fondness for the brand. And as mentioned previously, I personally need that sort of emotional bond with you know, a brand or a particular watch model, in this case, the Planet Ocean, which offers it in spades. Now, today's episode is sponsored by Chrono Hunter. So buying a luxury watch, especially if you're new to the hobby, can be quite a daunting process. With so much choice and ways of buying and selling, how do you know you're receiving the best deal? Well, that's where Chrono Hunter come in. With their revolutionary platform, Chrono Hunter provide an online luxury watch buying and selling experience that puts you in control. Simply enter the details of the watch you're looking for, sit back and receive multiple offers from their exclusive network of the finest retailers and trusted dealers. You'll receive quotes for both new and pre-owned examples of your dream watch, depending on the model, and you can then choose what works best for you with no pressure. This is a significant time saver where you no longer have to scroll through dozens of ads looking for the same watch and then pluck up the courage to negotiate over the price. Whether purchase or sale, Chrono Hunter offers a quick turnaround and peerless service as demonstrated by their Trustpilot ratings. This is a safe and secure service with authenticity guaranteed, mainly thanks to concluding the sale or purchase directly with the chosen authorised dealer or retailer. Okay, back to the episode. So last year I expected Amiga to make the most of the 75th anniversary of the Seamaster range, or the 30th anniversary of the Diver 300M Professional, the Bond watch. What we did get is the Summer Blue Dial Editions, which were okay, but not groundbreaking. Now I'd also predicted, again, uh, the release of an all new Planet Ocean, but what we got instead was this high-tech ceramic GMT version at £21,000. So given we can't expect to see a replacement anytime soon, well, certainly not this half of the year, what we see is the release of three boutique only models in gray, linen, and green, along with their chronograph counterparts. These watches share the same case size as the regular Planet Ocean at 43.5 millimeters and retail for 6,700 pounds, 400 pounds more, justified by the limited run and the additional dial finishes. The chronograph versions are 45.5 millimeters and at 8,500 pounds, only 200 pounds more than the regular equivalent. Go figure. Now, a few months back, I took the opportunity to try on the new boutique edition models at the Royal Exchange in London. And can honestly say that I thought the grey dial version to be pretty outstanding. Now, all three models have a fully brushed case rather than the brushed polished cases of the regular model. And I think it's the matching of the grey matte dial and that beige luminova that just works and makes it quite the stealth watch with a real sort of tall watch vibe. Now the linen or sort of sandy coloured version uh, is nice but I'm not a fan of this white contrasting date disc. This sticks out a little bit too much for me uh, and is not to my taste. Oddly this is better executed on the both of the grey dials with the green and the grey bezels uh, where the date disc is far better integrated. Now, as for the green, you know, it's just not for me. Uh, I like the vertical brushed grey dial, but couldn't see myself ever picking this one up over the green or the traditional blue. Looking at the range, well, there's a whiff of IWC looking at the colour choices, where you could argue that the Mojave Desert and Woodland Green coloured Pilot watches 
have more than a passing resemblance. And that's becoming quite a common trope with Omega, despite the excellent execution of their range. You know, from the coloured dials of the Shades Aquaterras to the two-tone Speedmasters, some would argue that Omega is following trends rather than setting them. Now, on a plus side, all three models come with a new integrated rubber strap with a kind of hobnail style embossed pattern, a bit like cell cloth with a sort of contrasting white stitch. Now, why they didn't use an actual cell cloth style material like the Artem strap on my Speedmaster, I don't know. I mean, that would be fitting for what is otherwise an aquatic themed watch. I mean, Artem do offer a 21 millimeter fitting with the Omega style um, clasp. So worth looking into if you didn't mind not having it fully integrated. And it was at this point when I had time with these three watches that I inquired if there was a blue version of this new strap. You know, as you know, I wear my Planet Ocean mainly on rubber and have had the blue strap from the Good Planet GMT for about five years. Now, although I do wear and enjoy the watch on the bracelet, and in fact wore this watch uh, on the bracelet for the whole of January, uh, and I got on fine with it. You know, it was a great daily for the time. Um, picked up a few scuffs on the back of the clasp, but hey, that's life. Um, but it's the rubber strap that makes most sense to me because it isn't normally a daily and I find the steel package just to be a little bit too weighty. So after a quick check on the Amiga accessory um, internal website thing, they found the blue strap, which I immediately ordered. Now the strap costs £260, which is a little steep, but in line with other OEM straps. And, you know, I'm yet to find an integrated rubber strap that wears as well as these genuine Omega ones do. Now, I'll leave a reference uh, number in the description, so if you want to go and buy it yourself, you pick up the reference number, go into either an authorised dealer or a boutique, and you should be able to order one. You can also call Omega directly, and they do sell you accessory parts. They won't sell you spare parts, but they'll sell you accessory parts. Now, I'm really happy with the result, and the blue strap matches the blue of the dial far better than the original. Now, I find the Omega Planet Ocean to be the perfect companion for sunny days and shorts. Now, and I plan to take this on holiday with me this year, although I'll not drop it on the hard stone floor again. But, you know, that's a real testament to the design and toughness of the watch. You know, just a small scuff on the bezel, and, you know, for the last 12 months it's remained you know, accurate and, yeah, sort of tank tough and reliable. Now, I might get it uh, pressure tested later this year, um, but it'll easily go another five years between the, the next service. And they do recommend on these modern watches 10-year service um, I bought mine in 2018 it went in for a bit of work uh, within warranty within two years so about 2020 so I reckon 2030 Christ I'll be nearly 60 by then um, before this thing sees a watchmaker hopefully assuming I don't yeah have a whoopsie now getting back to that replacement model could this be the year now maybe not Yet, uh, I mean, Omega have got to get through the Olympics and they've got some special editions, I'm sure. And I think this is an anniversary year, although I'm sure Phil will tell us exactly which anniversary year it is in the comments, so look out for that. Um, but Omega have been pretty consistent releasing throughout the year, and I'm talking, yeah, very regularly. So sometimes it's quite difficult to uh, pick it up, you know, you'll see it on an Instagram feed or something. So I, I personally wish they would do a bit more of a drop. So a few years ago, they did the Ultra Deep and they did the um, the Manual Wine Speedmaster 57 uh, and the Aquaterra Shades. I thought that was a good event because it really showcased those watches and it sort of crystallized people's views around Omega uh, away from the other sort of watches and wonders. So I wish they'd do more of that rather than this constant drip feed. I mean, blink and you'll miss it. I mean, it's fair to say that even if they do, typically it takes so long for them to hit the dealerships anyway. All you're going to do is disappoint by you know, showcasing these watches. Now, the one thing the guy in the boutique did say uh, was that Omega rarely release a new or replaced model unless there's a corresponding movement upgrade as well. So not like Rolex, where they'll move the crown either side of the Swiss made on the dial. That's the only change apart from the movement. Omega don't do that. So, you know, with the 8900 coaxial master chronometer caliber coming out first in the Globemaster in 2015, I suspect the model may take the honors ahead of the Planet Ocean. 
I think we'll see an update soon on some sort of limited run uh, watch, similar to the, what they did on the Speedmaster Super Racing, you know, where they introduced the spy rate regulator on the two register chronograph. I think they'll do something similar on the 8900, call it, I don't know, 89500, whatever they're going to call it, I don't know. Um, so one to look out for, and I think that will be the um, the cork in the bottle, if you like, for, for later models with yeah, this sort of uh, time and date uh, movement. Can't promise it will get any thinner, though. I suspect it will be based off you know, what is effectively the architecture of this, this calibre. Now, why not check out Chrono Hunter to find your perfect Amiga? There's plenty of choice, new and pre-owned. It's a really safe and efficient way to trade or sell and you know, taking the risk in the hassle out of the process with their revolutionary platform. Now, I'd love to hear what Seamaster models you have, specifically the Planet Ocean. Do you have the full fat chronograph? Do you prefer the smaller 39mm? Are you a blue dial guy like me or do you prefer the classic and versatile black dial? Maybe it's all orange or go home. Let me know in the comments in the section below. And while you're down there, why not hit the like button? You made it this far. Anyway, for now, I'm Andy. This has been The English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.